COVAX has notified countries in Africa of the estimated dose allocation for the first phase of COVID-19 vaccination delivery. The global initiative led by the World Health Organization and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations aims to start shipping nearly 90 million vaccine doses to the continent in February. To unpack this, we're now joined via Zoom by Dr. Fiona Atuhebwe, who's the WHO's Africa Regional Vaccines Introduction Officer. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Always good to talk to you. And this is great news. The vaccine is on its way. Um, the continent sadly has been watching other countries roll out their vaccine programs, and we've had to wait a little bit. Hello, uh, Fiona, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I was just saying that uh, these are exciting times for the continent. We're finally now getting these vaccines. We've had to watch many parts of the world roll out theirs, but uh, Africa is on the map now. Sure, sure, sure. We are really excited. It was, it was only a matter of time, mm -hmm. and our turn was coming. All right, so um, there are 54, 55 countries, depending how you define the number of countries on the continent. Not everybody is on that list for February. How have the ones that have been allocated been decided? So we do have um, the vaccines coming in waves, and we do have what we call the first wave countries. And the first wave countries are only four uh, for the COVAX, and these are the countries that will receive the Pfizer vaccine. And these are Rwanda, Cap Verde, South Africa, and Tunisia. And these were countries were requested uh, by Gavi to express interest for countries that were interested in the Pfizer vaccine. It was, this was beginning of January. Countries did express interest. We had 13 African countries expressing interest. We did review all the applications. And then because of the number of doses we were getting from Pfizer, we zeroed down to four countries. But then now we are looking at the other countries actually going to receive the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is subject to emergency use listing by the World Health Organization. And this should be happening mm -hmm. any time now. And these are the vaccines we are looking at that will top up, up to the 90 million. And we are expecting at least 88 million vaccine doses from the AstraZeneca. All right, but you're not just handing over these doses. The countries have to show you that uh, they're able to receive them store them and have a plan to distribute them, I guess. Oh, yes, oh, for sure. And for the countries that expressed interest for the Pfizer vaccine, that was the major requirement because the Pfizer vaccine requires special handling at minus 70 degrees. So that is what we were banking on. But for the AstraZeneca vaccine, it can be kept in the usual two to eight degrees, but the countries must also show us, number one, that they have the regulatory pathway to accept vaccines that are not yet pre-qualified by WHO, but are uh, have been received approval for emergency use listing, and we should know that they have enough cold chain capacity to have this vaccine uh, stored and yes, and distributed within the country. And of course, to have decided on the target population for their priority uh, risk groups that are going to receive this first batch of vaccines, which covers three percent of the populations. We've had conversations uh, in recent weeks about the continent's preparedness for receiving the vaccine and rollout. Based on the applications and the documentation you've seen, how prepared is the continent by and large? So the continent generally, when we bundle the countries together, we get a low level of preparedness. Mm. However, we know that some countries actually have are at an, an, an extended level of preparedness, uh, in different levels of preparedness. Some countries are not doing well. Other countries are really way ahead. We have countries that are at 90% preparedness. We have South Africa, for example, Rwanda. We have countries that are really uh, at a high level of preparedness. But then when we put all the countries together, Africa still remains mm. at 43 percent, but that shows you that some countries are pulling back others. But also, even within the country, we have 
thing we have activities and inter, uh, that are ready preparedness activities compared to others so for example most have not trained health workers so that pulls the preparedness level down but most of them have identified their priority groups the health workers the elderly the people with comorbidities and ha they have decided on how they will expedite the approval for receiving this vaccine within their countries so we have countries that have really gone ahead and are ready to receive the vaccine if it comes right away right now but we have some that are lagging behind so how do we help those countries that are lagging behind because in the end actually it's the citizens who through no fault of their own may find the vaccine comes much later down the track well so we are working really hard mm. as who and immunization partners to support these countries so we have who we have unicef we have several other partners we have gavi that is sending of us the support we have the african union the africa cdc that we are all sending technical support to these countries and we want to prepare the countries that in that by march april we are having all african countries able mm. to vaccinate all right and this covax facility the, the way it works is that those countries that can't afford really the, the, the full price of these vaccines will be assisted because of the general pooling of funds. Yes, they will be assisted. So we have, we have, but the funding that is coming from the COVAX facility is going to buy the vaccine doses. Mm. Then the, the African Union has also secured the 670 million doses. However, funding to implement the vaccination in countries, the funding to, to train health workers, the funding to assess who, who the side effects, the funding to transport the vaccines is expected from countries and uh, domestic, uh, they are expected to dis get domestic resources or get donor funding to support their own countries. So member states, and but the World Bank has put funds out there. The African Import Export Bank has put funds out there. So countries are expected to take advantage of these funds. Mm. I mean, in your lifetime, in my lifetime, we'll pre probably never see anything like this again, one hopes. Um, so there's a lot of learning that's taking place. Um, and 43% and already is a concern, but are you confident that, you know, it, at the end of the day, citizens are gonna get immunized and we are gonna get protected from COVID-19? Oh, yes, we are quite confident. You know, we, we, we have had so many vaccines. And like, the, for example, the US, the Europe are having issues with delivering this vaccine because they're not used to vaccination campaigns. We are used to vaccination campaigns. Polio has been with us for years, measles, yellow fever, meningitis. So we are used to vaccination campaigns as Africa. The issue is even when we have our cold chain risk constraints and all that, we have known how to handle huge masses of vaccines into our countries during outbreaks, because we've had several outbreaks. So we are quite confident that by the time these vaccines come, we are able to step up. Even with the minor issues that we shall have, we shall still be able to vaccinate mm -hmm. our citizens as we have planned. All right. What, what's your biggest concern, though, uh, all things considered? I beg your pardon? I said, what is your biggest concern, all things considered? Uh, the biggest concern is the limited number of doses. Mm. We already have a global shortage before we even start vaccinating. So we wouldn't want to lose any single dose. Every single dose here matters, and we wouldn't want to lose any. So countries must be as prepared as possible. The political will must be very high. The funds to roll out these vaccines, if the cold chain in the capacity is not enough, the governments must step up that. Health workers must be trained. We have the regulatory pathways that we're talking about. They must be ready to receive these vaccines. If they, the manufacturers say we're exporting this vaccine to such and such a country, the country should be ready with all its approvals in hand to receive these vaccines. Mm -hmm. And then health workers must be trained we should have what we the surveillance system if somebody gets a side effect how do we identify them how do we manage it who do we notify so all that must be in place but most important the global shortage right at the start is a big uh, worrying issue all right uh, dr tedros gebreisus uh, uh, kind of phrased uh, coined this phrase uh, covid 19 vaccine nationalism 
Um, has there been a change of attitude uh, or are we still concerned about hoarding that's causing some of, of these uh, shortages? Well, recently we had the, the European Commission in Norway, Canada, all come in to say, well, they will donate extra vaccines to, 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 to developing countries, Africa inclusive. So we don't know when, we don't know how many doses, but we have some uh, hope that now we shall get some of those vaccines. But we know still that the richer countries are actually taking up more of these vaccines, they are holding these vaccines. And this will definitely affect the global supply. All right, so still early days, I'm sure, but um, have we been able to get a sense of once these injections have been given, at what point will someone be immune or protected? So for, from what we know so far is that we need the two doses. Mm. We need the two doses for somebody to be fully protected. What we do not know yet is how long this protection lasts. And that's how studies continue. For example, for yellow fever, if you recall, we used to have to say to repeat it every 10 years because studies were still ongoing how long the protection lasts. But for now, after so many studies and following up people that received the first doses, it was shown to confer lifetime immunity. So this is the same with this. So as when the vaccine is given, we have to follow up people for long enough to know how long the protection uh, exists. But for now, we only have people who have received uh, the vaccines recently, so we cannot tell how long, but they will be followed up. Maybe in future years, we shall be able to know once the immunity starts going down that, oh, yes, so this is the number of years that this vaccine can confine immunity. All right. So two vaccines seem to be talked about so far, but there are others coming online. Will we also see those in Africa through COVAX? Oh, yes. So COVAX facility has actually a number of vaccines that are li sitting in its basket, about 10 to 15 vaccines, uh, who, which we are following up. We know that the Novavax, the Johnson & Johnson have all entered the, the review process. Now they've finished their phase threes. Uh, the Russian vaccine, the, the Sputnik V has also finished its phase threes. So all these are expected to send their doses to WHO for review. And once they're involved in them, they are, they are done with the emergency use listing and approved by WHO, they will enter the COVAX facility. Our countries will start receiving them because our COVAX facility has already signed deals with some of these manufacturers. All right. And here's another question. If you get a vaccine, let's say Johnson & Johnson this year, and then maybe next year you need a top up. Must you use the original vaccine or can you use another vaccine the next time? So this is information that mm. we do not have yet. However, mm. remember that the doses, for example, that Johnson & Johnson is a one dose vaccine. That yeah. one will be correct. But for the other vaccines, we have uh, these doses three weeks, four weeks apart. So it is not about next year. Mm. So we hope that we really the ideal would be that you'd get the two doses of the same vaccine. However, the vaccines have shown that they are able to confer the same immunity and still studies are going on to see if you mix the two vaccines, would you still maintain the high level of immunity like you would if you did use one vaccine? But there are chances that some people may get two doses of a different vaccine, but we, that period between the two doses being three weeks apart, high li highly likely that they will get the same vaccine.